Hi, everybody. It is Monday, and I hope you had a really great weekend. I think I slept too much because I couldn't go to sleep at all last night, and I woke up very early, so I'm probably going to be very tired later. But anyway, um, it's Monday, and we've got a lot going on. Progress report grades are happening today. So if your parents have not sent me any pictures of your work, I need that. Um, I have most people, um, but not everybody. So I'm going to be sending out some text messages and calling uh, parents whose work I need. I got to turn those grades in by three o'clock today. So uh, there's that. A new um, emoji Pictionary game is up. So use your clues. Now might be a little harder than last time, but maybe not hard enough. I'm not sure. So we'll have to keep seeing how good you guys are at figuring those out. Okay, so last time we read Ivan, we knew something sad was going to happen. We were predicting something sad happening soon, right? I don't know. So we're on page 114. And the last thing that we read was Stella was asking Ivan to make a promise to her. And the promise was that Ivan would take care of and look after little baby Ruby, the baby elephant. So he promised that he would take care of her. He doesn't know how he would take care of her because they live in different parts of the mall, but he'll do what he can. He's a silverback. Silverbacks protect their troop and... So he has someone to protect now. He never has, he has not had anyone to protect this whole story. So now he has Ruby to protect. So let's read the next 10 pages and find out what is going on. So this next chapter is called Knowing. Before Mac, before Bob, even before Ruby, I know that Stella is gone. I know it the way you know that summer is over and winter is on its way. I just know. Stella once teased me that elephants are superior because they feel more joy and more grief than apes. Your gorilla hearts are made of ice, Ivan, she said, her eyes glittering. Ours are made of fire. Right now, I would give all the yogurt raisins in all the world for a heart made of ice. So yes, Stella has passed away and Ivan is feeling very sad. That was one of his very best friends. Next chapter is called Five Men. Bob heard from a rat, a reliable sort, that they tossed Stella's body into a garbage truck. It took five men and a forklift. I don't even know what to say about that. Comfort. All day, I try to comfort Ruby, but what can I say? That Stella had a good and happy life, that she lived as she was meant to live, that she died with those who loved her most nearby. At least the last is true. Crying. Julia cries all evening while her father sweeps and mops and dusts and cleans the toilet. When George sees Mac, he runs to him. I can only hear a few of his words. Vet should have. Wrong. Mac shrugs. His shoulders droop. He leaves without a word. When George wipes the fingerprints off my glass, his cheeks are wet. He doesn't meet my eyes. So George and Julia are very upset about Stella's passing. And I think George um, feels like Mac did Stella wrong. Mac should have taken better care of Stella, and he didn't. The one and only Ivan. When all the humans have left, I send Bob to check on Ruby. How is she? I ask when he returns. She was shivering, Bob says. I tried to cover her with hay, and I told her not to worry because you were going to save her. I glare at him. You told her that? You promised Stella, Bob lowers her head. I wanted to make the kid feel better. I shouldn't have made that promise, Bob. I just wanted, I point to Stella's domain, and for a moment, it seems I've forgotten how to breathe. I just wanted to make Stella happy, I guess but I can't save Ruby. I can't even save myself. I flop onto my back. The cement is always cold, but tonight it hurts. Bob leaps on my belly. You're the one and only Ivan, he says. Mighty silverback. He licks my chin and he's not even checking for leftovers. Say it, Bob commands. I look away. 
Say it, Ivan. I don't answer, so Bob licks my nose until I can't stand it any longer. I am the one and only Ivan, I mutter. And don't you forget it, he says. When I gaze at the food court skylight, the moon Stella loved is shrouded in clouds. Once upon a time, almost done. This chapter is called Once Upon a Time. And here's a picture of the moon being shrouded by the clouds. And you can see I highlighted the word shrouded because that's one of our vocabulary words we're going to discuss. All night, Ruby moans and sniffles. I pace my domain. I don't want to fall asleep in case you need something. Ivan, Bob says gently, get some sleep, please, for your sake and for mine. Bob can't sleep unless he's on my stomach. I hear a stirring. Ivan, Ruby calls. I rush to my window. Ruby, are you all right? I miss Aunt Stella, Ruby sobs. And I miss my mom and my sisters and my aunts and my cousins too. I know, I say, because it's all I can think of. Ruby sniffles. I can't sleep. Do you know any stories? The way Aunt Stella did? Not really, I admit. Stories were Stella's specialty. Tell me a story about when you were little, Ruby pleads. She puts her trunk between the bars. Please, Ivan. I scratch the back of my head. I don't remember things, Ruby, I admit. It's true, Bob says, trying to be helpful. Ivan has a terrible memory. He's the opposite of an elephant. Ruby lets out a long, shivery breath. Oh, well, that's okay. Night, Ivan and Bob. I listen to Ruby's soft sobs for a long, horrible minutes. Then I hear myself saying, once upon a time, there was a gorilla named Ivan. And slowly and deliberately, I try to remember. Last chapter, it's called The Grunt. I was born in a place humans call Central Africa in a dense rainforest so beautiful, no crayons could ever do it justice. Gorillas don't name their newborns right away the way humans do. We get to know our babies first. We wait to see hints of what they might be. When they saw how much she loved to chase me around the forest, my parents decided to name my twin sister tag. Oh, how I love to play tag with my sister. She was nimble, but when I got too close, she would leap onto my unsuspecting father. Then I would join her and we would bounce on that tolerant belly until he gave us the grunt, the rooting pig sound that meant enough. That game never got old, although my father might have disagreed. That's page 124, but I think I'm going to do one more because, because it's short. All right, this one's called Mud. It didn't take long for my parents to find my name. All day long, every day, I made pictures. I drew on rocks and bark and my poor mother's back. I used the sap from leaves. I used the juice from fruit, but mostly I used mud. And that is why they called me Mud. To a human, Mud might not sound like much, but to me, it was everything. Wow, Ivan's gorilla name is Mud. What would your gorilla name be? Hmm, I'm going to think about my gorilla name. What would my gorilla name be? I don't know, probably Talk, because I used to talk a lot when I was little. And maybe my mother would have called me Talk. <laughs> or maybe Quiet, because she would want me to be quiet. Um, All righty. So our vocabulary word that I had highlighted was shrouded. So let's take a look at what shrouded means. Shrouded means covered. So the clouds covered the moon. The moon was shrouded by the clouds. The moon was covered by the clouds. So just like Ivan is feeling sad, he thinks the way the moon looks, that the moon might be feeling sad as well, that Stella passed away because Stella really loved the moon. So yeah. So not because I think this is something really nice for us to do, but when we're reading, it's really good for us to make personal connections with the story. So, I mean, think, if it's okay with you, think about a time where you might have lost someone and be feel, and lost something, either a pet or a family member that might have made you feel as sad as Ivan feels right now. I know I have lost my grandmothers 
one when I was very, very young, when I was in the first grade, and the other one when I was much older. And um, she passed away, and I still feel sad about them feeling about them passing away. So um, you can talk about that with your family and you make those personal connections while we read so we can create a deeper connection to what we're reading and to the characters. And it just makes reading a lot more enjoyable and makes you feel a lot more um, emotion connection, emotional connection to your characters. And that's what is so great about reading is that you form these connections with these characters that aren't even real. But you love them and you can, you want to read their story. So I got an email that my Ivan book, my nonfiction Ivan book about the real Ivan is going to be coming this week. So we'll look at that story too and uh, make some comparisons, see how this Ivan is, how the author chose to put some real Ivan facts into the one and only Ivan compared to this new Ivan book that's coming this week. So um, get ready for some questions in the description tomorrow night Zoom. And um, I think we messed up on Sharon Wells. I think we did some extra Sharon Wells questions. But anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow night. I'm going to stop talking now and let you get to work and get started on your Monday. Alrighty, Bye-bye.